Hi, this is Steve Lawrence with Investor News, and today I am talking to Dr. Roman Stiffner, who has come to us from Austria, and uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about uh, the EU and its involvement in the mining business today. So, Dr. Stiffner, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for having me here. Great. Now, you wear a lot of hats. Um, you are the, um, the vice president of Euromines, which is based in Brussels. And you are also the director of the Austrian Mining and Steel Association and the Non-Ferrous Association. So obviously that's of interest here at PDAC. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the organizations themselves? Yeah, sure. Um, this association represents the interest of the industry. The Austrian mining, steel and non-ferrous metals industry is very much keen to get uh, international representative and recognition. But we are trying to organize uh, this uh, um, industry to get a common voice, yeah, to get it more visible. From a, coming from a, com a small country, it's sometimes important to collect a bit more the strengths of a common voice and be vocal in this way. And Euromines is the umbrella association for all the member states in the European Union and is collecting all the voices of the industry, the mining and metals industry and refining industry in the, on the European level. And that is what Euromines is. Uh, having a voice to the European Commission, meaning the European government, to the European Parliament, and to the European public. And that's how it works, that we try a bit uh, to explain that mining is a prerequisite to get our continent and even our planet carbon neutral. Now, Canada has traditionally looked south. Well, within Canada, Canada has a lot of mineral riches, but we look south to the rest of North America, South America, and Australia. But Europe is now becoming much more part of the consciousness of the mining industry uh, through the entire supply chain, um, it, it, not just here in Canada in the financial sectors, but in the United States as well. Um, there's rare earths uh, that are coming online uh, in Europe as well. But, you know, are you feeling that there's more recognition of Europe as, a, a, as an important partner for the, rest of, for the North American world? Definitely. I think it's a result of our major crises, multiple crises. I think there are three major ones. The, it was the pandemic that showed, especially in Europe, the vulnerability of the supply chain, that we have not the resilience that we want to have. Second, uh, the Russian war uh, against Ukraine, I think it also makes us clear the geopolitical situation is coming back. And geopolitical is something that has, of course, an influence uh, to uh, the mining and material sector. And thirdly, I think it's clear that we have to do something against the climate change. Yeah? We have to fight it. And all these three major challenges, the answer for that is having own mines in Europe and having the raw materials site available for a more resilient um, supply of raw materials to make this transformation happening. And that's why I think this kind of mindset change happened in the last couple of months in the European institution but also, I think, also the European public. Mm -hmm. And Europe has been at the forefront of the electric car revolution, uh, green, green tech, green energy, and, uh, it, it, uh, and, and the carbon, um, uh, moving to a carbon neutral economy as well. So you know, we have a lot to learn, I think, from Europe and North America, because you know, Canada is moving in that direction. United States, more slowly, I think. Um, but uh, I think that expertise is, is more and more in demand in North America because, like I say, we have a lot to learn from Europe because you're so far ahead of us in these things. I think we have to join the forces. Uh, it's a very important that we share our common values. I think these so-called ESG predators are very important to share. I think the consumer in the Western world wants to know where the material is coming from and he was half a a good feeling when he's buying or she's buying a product. Yeah? And in the end, to have this kind of a definitely defined minimum standards uh, worldwide is a prerequisite. And I think this is a bit that distinguished the Western world to the other regions. They might not have this kind of attention to these criteria. And this is something that we uh, can really maybe have a better cooperation and more intensive cooperation. And to make it clear, in Europe, there are definitely some raw materials available. So there are some mines that we can even do bigger or open it. 
but we are not self-sufficient. So we need strategic partnerships. And that's why we are here also in PDAC. That's why we are here in Canada, because it's a country that can deliver a lot of these raw materials for the sake of a good let's say, development of the uh, common uh, economic situation in both countries and regions. Now, I know Austria has uh, lithium deposits, copper, but like you say, you know, if they're, some of these are very ancient mines <laughs> um, in there and, and there's challenges in, in doing that, both environmental and, and finding, finding finances and all the rest. Is, is PDAC important, uh, an important thing? Or how, how, how is your message being received at PDAC? Let, let me ask it that way. I think uh, I got a lot of positive response as I announced that uh, we are having deposit uh, for lithium uh, and we are a um, long way to go. But in the moment, we, we already granted all the exploration permits and we are, um, let's say, uh, also very much on the end uh, for the permitting process to come really to operation. So our plan is here to come in the next two years to 2026 uh, in operation. It will be the first uh, new mining site in lithium available in Europe, supplying directly the immobility sector. And I think this is something that we can really see that if you want to do something, it's possible. And we have the mines. So we have just uh, to take the courage also to, yeah, to make it happen and uh, to have this common understanding that mining is not a problem. It's the answer to all these issues, especially to the climate change uh, problem that we have to solve. Oh, that's that's a great message, and I think uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uptake on on that uh, here. I think people are starting to realize that not just government to government level, but uh, the people who raise the money to invest in projects are starting to look for safe, reliable jurisdictions that are interested in building the new economy and get, finding the raw materials. And I, I I hope you're finding lots of success here. Yeah, you said. Uh, for the investor, it's important to have a clear, I would say, long-term strategy and a, a jurisdiction that is really reliable. I think this is something that we um, now established with the so-called Critical Raw Materials Act. I think it was a good piece of legislation that the European Commission uh, was uh, more or less now elaborating, and it's in the last phase of adoption. Uh, most likely, it will be done in the March, April time, and then we have a really clear. Uh, piece of legislation that is well in all the member states in a direct form. So the investors can be sure that we have a clear timing uh, for granting permissions and also to make uh, not or to, to keep the risks in uh, investing in a mine very, very little. So de-risking, I think, is something that we have really to keep in mind and we think did it so far. Well, I've certainly noticed a lot more awareness of the EU at this PDAC more than previous PDACs because of, like you say, the, the world crises that we're going through. And so the attention is shifting to stable, reliable partners uh, who you know, we, uh, we may have ignored a little bit in the past, but uh, uh, it's nice to see that the EU is, is being top of mind again. So thank you very much for coming and I really appreciate your uh, taking time. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of PDAC. Much fun. Thank you so much.